Monopoly is the market structure where there is only one seller facing many buyers. Okay, so this single seller has all the power in the market. The seller will decide on the price, how much price they will charge and how much quantity they will sell. Okay, so let's see how monopolist uh, determines on how much quantity they sell and how much price they charge. Okay, so bas basically uh, they do profit maximization. Okay. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> assume uh, we assume that monopolists, all the monopolists, know their own demand function. Demand curve. Okay, so they know that whatever price they charge, they can sell as much as their demand. Okay, so basically their quantity demanded will be the quantity they can sell. All right. So let's assume that you know the in, uh, demand curve, demand function, and this is the inverse demand function. Okay, PQ. Okay. All right. So, uh, profit is total revenue minus total cost. Total revenue is Q times PQ. Okay. And uh, to decide on your quantity, you have to take derivative with respect to Q. And the first order condition says marginal revenue has to be equal to marginal cost. Okay. What is the marginal revenue? Marginal revenue is TR prime Q, right? TR prime Q, you have to have the, you have to solve the product rule. Let's say this is Fx and Gx. F prime X, Gx plus Fx times G prime, G prime X. So your MR, marginal revenue, will be PQ plus Q times P prime Q, okay? Now, I want to ask you a question, okay? Uh, by the way, this is how you decide on the quantity you sell, Q star. You do MR equals MC and then you determine the Q star. And once you determine the Q star, you plug Q star in your inverse demand curve and then you get the P star, okay? Here, important question is, you saw that also under perfect competition, each firm, each individual firm uh, does profit maximization. So it seems like it's very similar with the method in the under perfect competition. They also did profit maximization. Profit was total revenue minus total cost. And they also did first order condition. And you derive the P equals MC under perfect competition. What is the difference between monopoly and perfect competition? Are they the same? The firm behavior, do they behave the same as in the two markets? Absolutely not. Why? What is the key difference? The key difference is that under perfect competition, your price was exogenous. It was not the function of Q. Price was exogenously given from as a market equilibrium. So I emphasized that under perfect competition, everybody is the price taker. Okay, everyone observes the equilibrium price in the market, and they take that price as given. Okay, so the price is exogenous under perfect competition. However, under monopoly, your price is inverse demand curve. Okay, price is function of Q. So that that makes a huge difference. Okay. So in monopoly, unlike the perfect competition, you can you you can decide on specific price and quantity that you can sell, which will maximize your profit. Okay. So here is another question: What what is the supply curve of monopoly? In, in Monopoly. On the perfect competition, we had this function, uh, this formula P equals MC, okay? 
and then that P equals MC gave you the supply curve. What about in monopoly? What is the supply curve? The answer is that there is no supply curve under monopoly because you solve the profit maximization and you can immediately get Q star and P star that will maximize your profit. So that's just one point, P star Q star. Okay? Monopolists, they don't need supply curve because they exactly know what price they can charge to maximize their profit. Under perfect competition, price was given exogenously. Okay? So you have to know your supply schedule. So for each price, how much you're going to supply. So that's under perfect competition. So you have the supply curve. But under monopoly, you don't need supply curve. You don't have supply curve because you can pick exactly one point that will maximize your profit. So that's the difference, extremely big difference. Okay, let's do some very simple example. So I give you an inverse demand curve or inverse demand function and you have total revenue Q times PQ inverse demand. Q times PQ which is 12Q minus Q squared. And I give you, I will, I will give you total cost which is 1 half Q squared. Okay. So knowing this information, how can you determine on the Q star and P star? that will maximize your profit, okay? So this was the first of the condition, MR equals MC, okay? Okay, so MR is what? You take derivative with respect to Q for this total revenue function and you get 12 minus 2Q. And what is your marginal cost? You take derivative with respect to Q, okay? Then your Q star will be 4. And what is your P star? You have to plug this back in here, your, your inverse demand curve. And then you get the P star. Okay. So that's a very easy process. So this is, uh, you can also draw this um, MR curve. So your MR was 12 minus Q. So MR equals... Okay. Your MR is 12 minus 2Q. Okay. Uh, sorry, 12, yeah, 12 minus 2Q. Okay. So this red curve is your MR curve. This is your demand curve. So what you did was intersect, getting the intersection. Right? By equalizing MR and MC, this is MR, MC, the intersection gives you Q star and you go all the way up to the demand curve to get the P star, which is 8. Okay. All right. Mm, no, I want to explain one more time. So, under Monopoly, what you do is you have demand curve and then you get the MR curve, you get the MC curve, intersection gives you a Q star and then you go all the way up to the demand curve to get your P star. Okay, okay so you're going to do the same process with, uh, with this example. Please stop the video and solve this example. Okay, first you observe that this, uh, this cost function doesn't have any fixed cost. Okay, so it, uh, everything is just variable cost. And you have the aggregate, uh, you have the demand, aggregate demand. Okay, so to solve this problem, okay, you have to first get the inverse demand function. You have to solve for P. You have this demand function and you have to solve for P. Then the revenue, revenue is Q times P. Okay. And to get the marginal revenue, you have to take derivative of this revenue, which is 110 minus 10Q. 
and then you get the marginal cost function. Okay, you take derivative with respect to Q for this cost function. Okay, and then you equalize MR and MC, and you get Q equals 5. So Q star equals 5. Your P star, you plug in Q star in your inverse domain curve, and then 110 minus. 25 will be 85. Okay, so you get the Q star and P star. Okay. Now you can also verify that this monopolist is earning a positive profit. Okay. You can work positive surplus here. Everything is variable cost, no sum cost. Okay, so your average cost is exactly equal to average non sum cost. Okay. And profit will be also equal to producer surplus. Okay, prof producer surplus, the uh, profit is total revenue minus total cost. Producer surplus is total revenue minus non sum cost. Okay, so those are all the same. Those profit, non sum cost, average cost is the average non sum cost. Okay, all right, so here you just need to compare the average cost and the price. Okay, the average cost is 35, okay, and that is lower, the price is higher than average cost, which means that if you multiply by Q, both, it, which means the total revenue is uh, strictly greater than the profit, okay, so which means that um, this business makes a positive profit, okay, so in the long run, monopolist, can make positive positive profit. Okay. Uh, on the perfect competition, in the long run, because of the free entry and exit, yeah, all the firms make zero profit, but in monopoly, they make positive profit. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> now let's go move on to another example. Okay. So this is the demand function and this is the cost function. The fixed cost is 100, but look at this, C0 equals 0 means that this 100 is avoidable. So 100 is the non-sum fixed cost. Okay, so question is, you can get the, can you get the price setting, um, can you get the optimal price and quantity? And then consumer surplus, produce surplus, and the dead weight loss. Okay, how can you get what is the dead weight loss? Uh, you have to compare uh, the total surplus under monopolist, okay, and the total surplus under perfect competition, okay. Okay, let's assume that this um, there are identical firms, and you can just take it identical many identical firms. And then you aggregate all the identical firms and you can take it as just one firm under perfect competition. Okay, so let's say there are many, many identical firms and you can aggregate it to one firm under perfect competition and you can get the supply curve using this cost curve, your cost function. Okay, so you can get the equilibrium under perfect competition. And then you can you can get the equilibrium under monopoly, and you compare total surplus in these two cases and get the dead weight loss. Here, I want you to stop the video and attempt this problem by yourself. Okay. All right. So. I write, write down all the problem setting. First, you need to do is to get the inverse demand curve. You take this uh, demand curve and then solve for P. So that's your inverse demand curve. And then uh, you multiply Q both sides to get the total revenue. And then you take the derivative with respect to Q then your marginal revenue will be 120 minus Q, okay? 
and then your merger cost you just take derivative with respect to q then you get 2q plus 30 you equalize marginal revenue and marginal cost then you get q star equals 30 p star you plug this 30 in here and then you get 105 okay so if you're a monopolist in this situation you will sell 30 units of quantity and you will set one of five dollars okay now let's get let's assume the perfect competition okay to do perfect competition to get the supply curve on the perfect competition first you get the shutdown price by equalizing a and sc and mc okay then you get shutdown quantity equal to 10, shutdown price equal to 50. Okay, so this is your supply curve under perfect competition. P equals MC. Okay, this is MC. P equals MC. And then you solve for Q. Then you will get this supply curve, supply function. Okay, so uh, for price of, uh, greater than shutdown price, you have this marginal cost curve when P is exactly equal to 50 you are indifferent of producing 0 or 10 when it's strictly lower than 50, it's 0 okay now, let's try to get the welfare analysis okay, it looks a bit crazy okay. alright, but I hope you enjoy this colorful drawing all right, here I draw the demand curve. Okay, you can get your x, x uh, intercept and y intercept. And the blue curve is the supply curve on the perfect competition. Okay, 50 is the shutdown price and this is the marginal cost curve. So this is the demand curve and you can also get the MR curve, the red one. Okay, so what you did for the monopolist is that you equalized MC and MR and then you get the intersection intersection gives you the quantity that you want to sell under monopoly which is 30 and you go all the way up to the demand curve and you get the uh, monopolist price which is 105 okay and this is your supply curve under perfect competition okay you can get the intersection so this is supply curve on the perfect competition and then the demand curve you get the intersection by equalizing demand equals uh, supply then you will get uh, 36 and then 102 for the price okay so you can get each of this uh, point the value Okay, so here it's an intersection between MR and MC. You can plug in 30 into your MR function to get this point 90. Okay. Okay, so now let's do the welfare analysis. Under monopoly, under monopoly, what is the consumer surplus? Consumers pay 105 and they consume 30 units. Okay, so this orange area will be the consumer surplus. You can calculate it and verify that it's 2 to 5. Okay. And the producer surplus under monopoly. Okay. The firms, um, the firms receive 105, what, and they sell 30 units. Okay. So the total revenue will be this whole rectangular area. Okay. And you know that this cost, uh, this area is non sum cost. We, we proved that. We proved that the um, uh, area under the uh, supply curve under perfect competition is the non sum cost, this area, this old blue area. Okay? All right. So, producer surplus under monopoly is total revenue minus total uh, non-sum cost, which is this green area. Okay. So you can split this green area into this rectangular area and then this trapezoid area. 
it will be 450 plus 800, which is 1250. But you can also get the same, but I recommend, I don't recommend this, this way of producer, getting producer surplus under monopoly. If, if you are doing a monopoly problem, then just simply get total revenue minus total cost. Okay, so what is the total revenue here? 105 times 30. Okay, what is the, uh, sorry. Uh, the, sorry, sorry. Producer surplus is equal to total revenue minus non-sum cost. Okay, not the total cost. Okay, again, producer surplus is total cost. Ah, uh, sorry, total revenue minus non-sum cost. Okay. So your total revenue is thirty times one hundred five. Non to get the non-sum cost, you get you just need to simply plug in thirty into your cost function. So that was your cost function. Everything is non sum cost. You just plug in 30, 30 squared plus 30 times 30 plus 100. That will be non sum cost. Okay. So then you will verify that that is equal to 1250. Okay. All right. Now, um, what is under perfect competition? What is the consumer surplus and producer surplus? Under perfect competition, the consumers pay 102 here, okay, and they consume 36. So this a bit bigger triangle area will be the consumer surplus. Producer surplus will be this trapezoid area. So total surplus under perfect competition is this weird shape area, okay. Okay, so what is the dead weight loss? Dead weight loss is the total surplus under perfect competition minus total surplus under monopoly. So which is this pink area, pink uh, triangular area. That is 45. Okay. So what do we learn here? When uh, under monopoly, you have the dead weight loss. Okay, because in under perfect competition, every everybody is engaging in in the fair competition and then maximize the total surplus. But when there is only one firm, this one firm gets extracts too much surplus from the economy and results in underproduction and results in the dead weight loss. Okay, if you compare this consumer surplus under monopoly, this orange area, it's smaller than the consumer surplus under perfect competition. Okay. On the other hand, uh, you can calculate that the producer surplus under monopoly will be higher than the producer surplus under perfect competition.